You know how people say, um, walk a mile in my shoes? Yeah. Spend two seconds in my head? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard right now. Really. Yeah. Pain and MS for me. I've had periods of time where I haven't even been able to walk. Ten. Nice work. Pain has been so bad that my clothes actually hurt to wear them. I think the mindfulness meditation will help me be a bit calmer as a person and not be so emotionally reactive to, to situations. Erin will join 12 others in a specially designed mindfulness experiment to try to understand what it can and can't do. Mindfulness-based stress reduction was first developed and introduced for people who weren't responding to traditional medical approaches in cases of cancer, chronic pain, things like that. So that's the idea was for a lot of individuals uh, who weren't getting help or weren't benefiting from medications. It's a very different way of actually interacting with and responding to your pain. Neuroscience is increasingly reinforcing the link between the mind and body. The way we experience pain is intrinsically linked to networks in our brain that we've long thought we have no control over. And if it's right for you, perhaps placing your hands on the abdomen. But there's significant new research studying how mindfulness might alter our experience of pain by changing these networks. What we know with chronic pain is that actually the central nervous system over time rewires itself. And so actually when we're processing pain repeatedly, the brain gets better at what it repeatedly does. But the good news is that those same processes, we can actually begin to reverse those. We can actually make uh, neuroplasticity, so the ability of the brain to change and adapt. We can use that to work for us rather than against us, as is typically the case with chronic pain. And so the training in mindfulness meditation is actually a tool to be able to do that. There were a lot of challenges along the way, absolutely. Um, and at times I thought this isn't gonna work for me, but then I actually find myself if I don't do it, I actually miss doing it. Erin returns to see pain researcher Dr. Saminovich to complete a second set of MRI scans. These scans will reveal any changes to Erin's brain following the mindfulness course and could suggest an increase in her brain's capacity to combat pain. First, we'll have a look at the anatomicals. So this is from your first visit, and this is the scan from your second visit. The scans have revealed changes in two parts of Erin's brain, called the thalamus and the putamen. And so both of those areas are uh, implicated in pain processing, and it could reflect the uh, difference in the way that your brain is now processing pain after your, your training. Wow. These are big changes too, I mean like, 10% increases in grey matter volume. Dr. Saminovich has also discovered some changes in the function of Erin's brain. He's particularly interested in three networks associated with pain processing. When we look at each of these networks, you can see larger than slight increases in activation in those networks um, at your second visit compared to the first visit which might actually translate into uh, decreased pain over time. So what you're saying is, is that the structure of my brain or the function of my brain has actually changed as a result of this eight week period of mindfulness based stress reduction course that I've been doing. And you can actually see that by those two scans. Yes, yep. It is showing that your brain has changed and that's not 
totally surprising because we know that uh, long-term uh, meditation practitioners have different brain structure and function compared to non-practitioners. And there's been some evidence now showing that mindfulness-based stress reduction changes the brain in certain ways. Wow, there we go. That's, that's amazing. I'm absolutely surprised. I mean, pleasantly surprised. I, I wanted to believe that, that, that there would actually be changes and I think we've seen that there actually has been changes. We can actually see it, it's right there on the screen and that was only after eight weeks. So if you continue to practice this over time, there's gonna be a lot more changes and I think that'll be fantastic, particularly for pain management. So this is certainly something that I'm going to wanna to continue with throughout the rest of my life. One of the most intriguing questions is whether mindfulness could offer a viable alternative to existing treatments for chronic pain. We just don't know yet if it works better than our other treatments. That's not to say that it doesn't work. There does seem to be evidence that it, it helps people. And I think it's a great complement to medications that actually don't really help people overcome chronic pain in the long run. They sort of just numb the acute issue. Um, but whether or not the mindfulness-based interventions are actually better than our sort of other treatments is still up for debate. We still need more rigorous studies.